There are a number of ways that you can export and prepare your images for web use. My preferred method is to use Photoshop because it is the application that probably gives you the most control and the most choices. You'll be able to really dial in your images and get them to be as small as possible and optimize in just the way that you want. But that is not always the easiest way to export images. You can export images from Figma or other applications that you use for wireframing. It also is possible to use some other Photoshop-ish types of applications, and I'm just going to show you a couple of those here. When we look at the mobile and large screen version of our high fidelity wireframe, you can see that the images are different sizes. Generally, they will be larger on the desktop version as opposed to a mobile version. You'll always want to serve up the smallest version of the image possible for this particular device so that the user has the most optimum experience. You would not want to serve up an image that is 1440 pixels wide for a screen that is only going to need to have an image that is 375 pixels wide. So you do want to consider those things. Obviously, it is not possible to target every sort of screen, so I recommend that you use the t-shirt sizing where you have a small, medium, and large version of your image, or maybe you just have small and large, whatever is necessary for your particular project, you'll need to make that determination. In this example, I'm just going to have a small and a large version of my image. If you are going to be exporting the images from Figma, what you'll do is you'll simply click on the image and the image is going to show up in the layer pane. Because I didn't take any time to name my images, they all have names like mask group or untitled or rectangle or something like that. So they're not very intuitive names. The layer names are what is going to be assigned to the file name. So it does make sense to actually name your files. So if I was to select this image right here, I would come to the layer pane and I can double click and I'll just call this SM Capricio for small Capricio. I'm going to select on this image and I'm going to name this one LG Capricio since this is the large version of the image. If we select this hero image that we had prepared, and remember we had put a rectangle that had a low opacity on top of the image to make the text easier to read. So I'm going to want to select both the rectangle and the image, and in order to export these together, I'll need to group these. So with both items selected, I can right click and I can select group selection that will group these. And then I'm just going to call this SM hero. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'll select the group of imagery. We'll right click and we'll group the selection together. And I'm going to call this one LG hero. Now I'm ready to export these two images. In order to export the images inside of Figma, you'll need to select the image and you'll come down here to the right hand pane. You're going to go to the export tab. And if this is not expanded, you'll need to click on it to expand it. And you will be able to set up your export settings. You're going to need to know a little bit about the types of file types that are best suited for web use. From Figma, you can export as PNG, JPEG, SVG, or PDF. In regards to the web, the most commonly used formats are going to be PNG, JPEG, SVG, and GIF. Photographs are best suited for JPEG imagery because it supports millions of colors, and we will get the smallest file size. I'm going to choose that, and then I'll click this button here, Export Small Hero. It is worth noting that you do have a preview so you can see what the image looks like. I'll just go ahead and export it. It is going to prompt me to save the image. I've already made a folder called exported, so I'll go ahead and export to that folder. And let's go ahead and let's export the large version too. So I'm going to select the grouped large version. I'll come to export once again. You can see that it's going to prompt me to export the large hero. I'll need to select JPEG once again. I'll click export. And once again, I want to save in my exported folder. I'll click save. And if we look in my folder, here is my exported. Here is the large hero. It's 264 kilobytes. Here is the small hero. It's 72 kilobytes. 
These have been saved out, but the file size is not really optimal. I could certainly get this file to be much smaller if I was using a different application. And the same thing for the large hero. So let's talk about how we can possibly get the file size to be a little smaller using a different application. The application that I'm going to be demoing right now is called Photopea. This is an online application and it does have a lot of similarities to Photoshop. So if you are familiar with Photoshop, this is going to feel very comfortable to you. You do have ads this is ad supported so this is kind of the downside of not having the actual application and you will not have all of the different features that photoshop has but certainly you do have enough to be able to export your files the first thing that you're going to need to do is bring the file into photopea in order to do that you can simply drag the file into photopea and it will load the file into the online application or you can go to File, Open, and you will be able to navigate on your computer and choose any image that you want to open. I'm going to hit Cancel, and here is the image right now. I need to know a few things. I first of all need to know the largest size at which I want to use this image. If I go back to Figma and we click on the large hero image, we can see that it's 1440 by 298, or we'll just say 300. I'm going to switch back to Photopea. In order to make the image the appropriate proportions, you can go to Image, Image Size, and you can reduce the size of the image. Now before I do that, I'm going to actually leave my image larger so that I can crop into the portion of the image that I want. In the Image Size dialog box, I'm not going to reduce the width all the way down to 1440 but I am going to make the width 3000 pixels. So I'm going to make it about half the size. Since I want the height to proportionately scale down, I'm going to click this to keep the proportions linked. I will click OK, and this will reduce my image down to about half of the size that it currently is. I can zoom in by using Command or Control Plus. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use my Crop tool, and I'm going to crop a portion of this image to be the correct size. So we need our image to be about 300 pixels high and 1440 wide. So I'm just using the little overlay so I can get the cropped version of the image to be the appropriate size. Once I've done that, I can grab this overlay and I can position it to different parts of the image. So if I want to crop to a different section of the image, I can do that as well. Now as I'm looking at this, it looks like my image is still a little too big. So I'm going to hit escape and we'll size our image down a little bit more. I'll go back to image, image size, and I'm going to go ahead and make this about 2000. The height will just be the proportionate height. I'll click OK. And then once again, I'm going to make a crop panel. If you find that you are having trouble making the crop window the correct size, you will be able to go to the width and the height if you choose a fixed size and you can plug in a size. So we know we want this to be 1440 wide and 300 pixels high. Now I can just reposition this in the area that I want. And once I have made a decision on that, if I'm good with these changes, I will just simply hit return to accept those changes. Now that I have the image like this, I'm going to want to make that overlay on top of it as well. So I will make a new layer. I'm going to fill the new layer with black. So I'm going to go to edit, fill, and we want to fill not with a foreground color, but with black. And we want to fill with about 40%. I'll click OK and you can see it makes this dimmed version of the layer. And now I'm ready to save. So I'm going to go to File, Export As. And once again, I have Ping, JPEG, SVG, now I have GIF, PDF, and then you have more choices available as well. For web use, these first four are going to be ideal. I'm going to choose JPEG, and I can set the quality setting right here 
JPEG uses a compression setting that allows you to control how much compression is being used. If you want to zoom or show a different part of the image, you can move the image around. And if you make the quality go down, the file size is going to go down considerably. So at 100%, the file size is 227. If I reduce this down to like half, it goes down to 13.7. So that is a huge amount of savings. And as you can see, the image still looks pretty good. There's not really that much of a difference. This is going to be a background image, so I really don't need it to have a really high quality anyways. So I'll go ahead and I'll click save. It's going to download and save the file. It's going to save in the location where you save your default files. So if you want to put it somewhere else, you'll need to move it. Here is the version that I just saved. You can see it's 14 kilobytes. It has the same name as the file that I imported. And I have reduced the physical size as well as the file size. As you can see, this gives me a lot more control over the file size, and I will be able to reduce it down considerably. In addition to using Photopea, there are websites that just compress images. So this is one called TinyPNG. It offers ping and JPEG compression, and all you need to do is drop your file into this pane. It will go ahead and upload the file and then compress it. And you can see that my original file was 1.5 megabytes. Once it has completed its compression, it will give you a compressed file. So it's compressed this down to 539. Now this particular image is really large. I downloaded it from Unsplash and it is a 4,000 pixel wide image. So it is huge. All this website lets you do is compress the file. It doesn't let you crop it or resize it in any way. If you want to do something like that, which I highly recommend that you do do so that you can optimize the images, you should use something like Photoshop or Photopea or some other image editing application that allows you to adjust the image size. Needless to say, I hope this has been beneficial to you and that you now have an idea of how you can optimize images and understand the importance of optimizing images so that your website is as small and lean as possible. This will make it function in the best way for the widest variety of users.